Hey everybody and welcome back to yet another video. So today we're going to be talking about animation and simulation and how you can have animated objects interact with NCloth. Right? Here we go. Okay, everybody, so we're in my 2019 and in front of us is Manuel and Manuel can dance, right? And I'll show you that in a second. And the reason why Manuel is standing in front of what looks to be like a wall is because I'm going to show you guys in this video how you can have animated objects interact with NCloth. And I did a video on that a couple of years ago. Um, apparently, a lot of people don't understand the true potential. Once you understand this technique, you can have uh, scarfs on characters move as they move. You can have uh, flags interact, uh, sails, uh, maybe canopies, maybe awnings, anything that's made of fabric or even uh, like cables and ropes or whatnot. You can have them interact with the environment and the environment interact with them, right? So that's going to show you guys in this video. Now, first, let's have Manuel do his little dance, and you can get Manuel off of renderpeople.com. I'll put a link below uh, specifically to this guy, and you can get him for free. He's fully textured. He is mocap animated. Uh, I just didn't put a texture on just now, uh, but you can do all that, right? Okay, so we're going to hit play, and we'll see that he starts to move, and also you see our curtain falling down, and I'll address that in a second, but there you go. He's dancing. And there you go. Right, so our end cloth is falling down. Now, there's nothing to hold it in place. That's the simple reason for that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a simple cube. We're gonna move that up. We're gonna hit R, we're gonna scale it up a bit like so, and then give it some length. And the reason why I'm doing that is if this curtain were to stay in place and not move at all, I could just constrain the top vertices. But what if I want to move this around and have the cloth interact with it, right? So I got that in place. I'm going to jump to this screen right here. Uh, no, not that one, to this one. Okay. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select my cloth object, hit four for wireframe mode. I'm going to right click, go to vertex, drag select the top row of vertices, shift select the uh, rectangle, and then go in here to end constraint and go to point to surface. Basically what that now means is where the bar goes, the end cloth goes, right? Now, first of all, the bar is not going anywhere right now, so the curtain will stay in place. So if I jump back to frame one, hit play, the end cloth is still end cloth, it's just not falling anymore, okay? Now he's dancing, he's gonna turn around and he's gonna touch the curtain and look what happens nothing at all. He'll go straight through it. You see? The reason being that we didn't tell Maya yet, or we didn't tell the end cloth yet, that Manuel is there and that he's dancing. Okay? So that's the next step. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our end cloth, we're going to shift select Manuel, come on, yeah, and then we're going to go up to uh, end cloth and we're going to create a passive collider. So right now, if you go back to frame one and we hit play, you'll see that he will interact with the curtain. So let's hit play. First the hand movement, dancing around. It's going to turn and boom. See that? And let me do that one more time so you can see it clearly. Yeah, doing the hand thing. And there you go. You can clearly see that it's working, okay? All right, so and now that we know how that works, let's go in here and create a new scene. And I'll show you a couple of examples here. Let's just go back in here and turn on my grid. Yep, so I'm gonna quickly set that up. We'll take a polygon plane. And if you decide to make that resolution higher, the end cloth will look a lot better, but everything will slow down quite a bit. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go in and set my plane to 50 by 50, like that. I'm going to create another cube, hit W, hold that up, 
and scale that out like so. Control D to duplicate, W to push down to there. And we're basically going to repeat the steps that we did before. Let me first bring this up. Okay. So this guy under FX, create an end cloth. Okay. Then we need to uh, fix it into place with our cubes or our holders or whatever you want to call them, right? So select this, hit 4 for wireframe mode, right click at a vertex, drag select the top row of vertices, shift select this guy, constrain, point to surface. Let's go down here, select it again, right click vertex, drag select, shift select this guy, and you can hit G to repeat last command or again go to point to surface. Now, with that in place, uh, and the cube's not moving anywhere, if we hit play, the only thing you potentially will see is a little bit of drooping of the fabric down here because of the gravity applied and so forth, right? Okay, uh, nothing too serious. Now, because we connected the ink cloth to the bars or the cubes, we can actually move this around. So let's do that. So we're on frame one and I'm going to select uh, this guy and this guy and these are the only two I need to animate because the ink cloth will follow it around, right? I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to uh, keyframe that. Okay guys, well it's time for a little sponsor break here and without them I can make any of these videos for you guys so show them some love, right? And you actually might love this one. So if you need 3D models for a lifelike visualization that you're working on, you might want to check out Render People. They offer 3D posed, 3D rigged, and even 3D animated people models, right? And they have over 3,000 products right now. They cover uh, models suitable for business, shopping, sports, swimwear, evening wear, outdoor, and even specialty models like doctors, workers, and whatnot, right? So uh, they're high resolution, 8K maps, clean UVs, clean meshes, ready to go in 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, SketchUp, Unreal Engine 4, Unity, Blender, and Rhino. Now, if you guys use the link below, you'll not only help out my channel at no extra cost to you, but you'll also get free models, totally free models that are posed, rigged, and animated. All right, so everything's keyframed on frame one, right? And we're just gonna move this. So we're not gonna go too far. Let's say we'll go to, um, I don't know, we'll go to frame 40. Okay, frame 40. And we're gonna slightly move it forward. Nothing crazy. We don't want it to bounce all over the place, right? So we moved it forward. We're gonna hit S on our keyboard to keyframe that. We're gonna jump back to frame one just to see how this works and whether it will follow along or not, right? And so hit play. And there you go. It's responding perfectly. Okay, cool. Now let's make it a little bit more interesting. We're gonna jump back. We're gonna hit Control Z to get rid of our last keyframe. So we just have our starting point, okay? Now, what if we uh, animate the top bar while we're moving forward? So frame one is keyframed. We're gonna move forward to let's say frame 10 or so. And I'm gonna move this forward to about here. Then I'm gonna select the bottom bar, hit S to keyframe that because that one's good. Take the, bottom, the top bar, move it down a little bit and rotate a little bit and then hit S on that guy to keyframe that. So now if we animate this, it will move forward, twist and come down or whatnot, okay? Let's check that out. Now you can see it responded quite fast because of the movement, but you can see it works quite well. And if you're not happy with how that fabric responds, you can select it, you can hit Control A Go in here and then you have presets you can choose from, uh, you know, a chainmail, a burlap, a silk, a t-shirt and so forth. And if you go to replace, it will take that uh, property. So I'm just going to do that. And uh, then you have a whole bunch of settings here in the attribute editor, uh, collide strength, tear strength and all that, right? But we'll do that another day. Okay, so we have this. Now let's uh, go back to uh, our frame one. One and two is keyframed. I don't want that second keyframe. So I'm just gonna go in here to our starting point. 
yeah there we go back back and back yep yeah, that's our starting point and let's take an object and have it interact with this guy okay so uh one and two that's keyframe on one we're at frame 10. i'm going to bring in a sphere and w pull that up pull that out make it a bit bigger let's see something like so and what i first want to do is animate the cloth so i'm going to select the one and two it's keyframe on one i'm going to scrub it forward to frame uh, let's see we'll do nice and slow we'll do frame 30 okay and then i'm going to hit w and move that forward to about there okay and the cloth will follow along as before so don't worry about that right hit s on my keyboard now the only thing left is to select my end cloth shift select my sphere and i need to tell uh, the end cloth that there's actually a sphere there right so i'm going to go up to end cloth and create passive collider so now we're going to jump back to frame one and let's hit play and see what happens and i'll just change the angle here so you can see it and it responds perfectly okay so once again keep in mind what you can do with this you can have scarves around characters you can have flags uh, canopy sills all kind of cool stuff right so in the next video uh, on this topic what i'll talk about is um, wind and all other sorts of parameters you can include to make it a lot more fun okay so thank you guys so much for checking out this video uh, and see you guys next time bye well thanks for watching and before you go please hit that mh button to subscribe okay see you guys next time bye